Uh, can you hear me okay? All right, good. Um, uh, thanks for the introduction. Yeah, my name is uh, Gareth Morgan. I work at an agency uh, called Liberty. We're a uh, digital marketing agency, and the kind of things we get up to are uh, search engine uh, marketing, social media stuff, content marketing, advertising online. Um, what I thought it would be good to do today was go through the subjects of SEO and pay-per-click. Before I do, quick show of hands. Who here currently does SEO? Okay, who here currently does pay-per-click? Who here has no idea what those two acronyms stand for? It's okay to admit it, because half the time I wish I was you. Okay, all right. Um, well, I'm going to go through a whole range of things. Some of it is basic, some of it's advanced, some of it's brand new, some of it is best practice that has been tried and tested over the years. I suppose what my goal is here is to give you some, some real good uh, practical tips, something you can take back uh, when you're next sat in front of your laptop, you can actually make your lives a little better. Um, obviously, this is an enormous subject. It's something I could talk about for hours. I've got about 20 minutes now, so hopefully if we've got time at the end for a question or two, you guys can shout them out. If not, I'm here all day and uh, happy to go through things with you. So, uh, to start, I'll cover the subject of SEO, and one of the first things I want to talk about, a common problem we see for a lot of companies, is they just don't show up within the index. So some, there's a couple of little tests you can perform to find out, is Google actually able to see all the pages on my website? Am I giving Google all of the information, and is it actually showing them? So this is one little, um, little thing you can do if you go into Google and you cite colon, and then you put your root domain down. This will actually um, serve you up with a results page that shows all of the um, pages that Google holds from your website within the index. Uh, what you're looking for is a number there that's roughly the same with the number of pages you've actually got on your website. Something else you can do is there's a free tool, and it's actually mentioned there as the top result, called um, Webmaster Tools. This is uh, a little bit of code you can stick on your website, and Google will just monitor your site for you and actually report back on how many pages it's showing up. So it's a really good place to start, because it's a, a common issue we find for a lot of companies is, is they might be creating great content, they might be doing some interesting things, but they're just not being found within Google. Um, and if they do have a problem, or if, if you guys have a problem and you're not showing up, then one of the first things to think about is, are you using sitemaps? Um, often you'd want these things linked uh, a lot on your website, potentially in your footer menu. You'd put a link to a sitemap, and a sitemap's just a list of all the pages on your site. As long as Google can see that, it knows, um, it knows what you're about, it knows what you want it to serve up, you should be okay. You can also do a thing called an XML sitemap, which is sort of like a feed you can give them as well. So it's quite an easy problem to, um, to fix, uh, and it's one that is worth just spending a minute or two trying to identify if it's an issue for you. Now, something that is hugely important once you've got all your pages showing up is how you use keywords. And one of the, one of the main things I'd say is um, periodically you should re-examine the keywords that you're using on your website and the, the kind of search terms that you're targeting. Um, not only do these things change, so you know, fashions come and go and, and search terms that people put into Google will, will change in popularity, but also the way Google indexes words and the way it displays them changes as well. So the way Google sees synonyms at the moment is very different to a few years ago. So if you guys did keyword research quite a few years ago, it might not actually be relevant for the market you're in now. So one of the things I'd do is um, go into the Google Keyword Tool, and there's, there's other keyword tools as well, and just take a look at the kind of search terms that are used in your marketplace and have a think about whether you're actually going for the right ones. Um, and then when you've picked your keywords and when you know which search terms you want on each page, um, it's really important to get them on a page-by-page -page level. So what, one of the things we always try and avoid is keyword cannibalization. So that's when you've got sort of two pages going for the same search terms. That can be a real common problem, can really screw up your rankings. You want every page going for, for a different, small, tight set of keywords. And then what you've got to do is make sure that that page is as relevant for those search terms as possible. So what I'm not talking about is keyword stuffing and getting loads of keywords in there, but I'm, make, I'm talking about just making sure you've got title tags and meta descriptions and maybe headings that have got the right search terms in there. And um, this example on screen shows you how big a quick win this can be. This is a, um, an e-commerce website we did some work for recently, and I'd love to say that we did something fantastic here and we had some magic up our sleeve. We didn't. All we did was take a look at the keywords um, that they were using and just tweaked one or two of the, the main targets. We just rewrote title tags, we tweaked meta descriptions, and as you can see, it can have a huge, uh, hugely positive impact very quickly. So if you guys haven't looked at keywords in your marketplace, and if you haven't made sure that your pages are optimized, this is probably the best place to spend some time and effort. 
Uh, something else to have a think about is uh, internal link use on your website. So I don't know if you guys have ever noticed if you're doing a search for your website or other websites, it's quite often the About Us page or the Contact Us page that ranks really well. That's not because external links are pointing in. That's because the internal site structure, usually you'll find those pages within a footer menu or, or within the main menu. They're so heavily linked to from other pages on the website that Google gives them uh, priority. So something to have a think about on your website is um, the priority pages, the pages you really want people to visit. So they might be your category pages or your main product pages or uh, whatever they may be, pages for your main services. Are they held within the menu structure? Are they well linked to on your site? Um, something you can do to help boost this internal link juice is um, uh, potentially blog posts or news pieces. So say, for example, you're an e-commerce website and you're, you've just put a new product on your site. You could write a blog post about that product. You could maybe review it or you could talk about the accessories that are coming with it or the customization options. And you can link through to that product page. You're sort of telling Google, go and check out this page. And within that link, you can use a thing called anchor text. So that can also give Google an idea of the theme of the page. So you can sort of sculpt uh, a keyword relevance and, and really help Google figure things out and give everything a little bit of a push. Now, one of the main things for, for people in the world of SEO is content. It really is, uh, these days, at the center of what we do, and you, you can't really stand up on stage and talk about SEO without banging on about content. One of the main reasons is Google just loves content. That's what it's there for. If you think Google is just like an online library, it exists to go out and find fresh content, store it in an index, and then serve it up to users. And it wants to show good content. Because if Google starts serving up rubbish, then everyone's going to start using other search engines. So what you've got to do is feed the beast. You've got to come up with great content. And the good content, the better kind of um, uh, videos or information, uh, you know, blog posts, news pieces, competitions, whatever it may be that's right for your business and your market, the higher the quality, the better your SEO is going to happen naturally because Google is going to come back more looking for content, but so are users and people are going to link to you. So it's something to have a think about is the content you're creating, is, uh, is it generating links? Is it getting other websites to reference it? Are you being mentioned because of it? And in particular, are you getting mentioned more than your rivals are? Because if you've got competitors that create better content than you do, and they get links off other websites, then they're going to start outranking you in the search engine. There's nothing much you can do about it unless you start playing the game. Now, one of the great things you can do with content from an SEO point of view is start mopping up long tail keywords. So long tails are really specific, uh, sort of low volume keywords, quite often um, questions people would have in a, in a marketplace. Every time you write a blog post or a news piece or, or, or give out some, some advice, you can optimize those posts for those questions. And these are really good ways of bringing in qualified traffic and, and showing that you're an authority in your marketplace. Because if someone's searching for a question or someone's got a problem and they're going online and they're finding you ranking for it and they're coming through and you've got the answer for them, then that's someone who's quite a motivated visitor. They might actually do something with your website. They might fill in an inquiry form. Um, and on the subject of content still, and talking about outreach, is take a look um, at the kind of things you're creating and have a think about the, the, the content, how you can use it to get inbound links. Google should be seen as a popularity contest. So the more links you've got coming into your website, the better. But it's not just a numbers game. What you're looking for is authority, and you're also looking for relevance. So who are the websites in your marketplace that are authorities and are they relevant to you? So, I mean, authorities to all of us are sites like the BBC and the Guardian. So say you're in financial services, how can you get a link from the financial section of the Guardian? How could you get a link maybe from the FT? How could you get a link from um, the, the FCA? All these different sites out there. Who are the bloggers in your marketplace that are the most influential? Um, and how can you get content on them? Because content's not just for use on site, it's also to be used to, uh, to attract traffic and links back. Um, one of the big things uh, we do at Liberty, but, but everyone in our market does, is guest blog posting. So it's what you'll find is a lot of bloggers and also journalists, they're really time-strapped and they might be running out of ideas for fresh content. 
how can you guys have sort of a win-win situation? What could you write that is really relevant to their users that they can have for free so they don't have to spend this afternoon writing an article in exchange for a link back to your website? Start having to think about the different sites out there and take a look at what your competitors are doing, which sites are linking to them, and can you start to replicate it? Um, here's an example of another way of doing it, uh, competition. So this is a designer handbag brand we work with. Now, these guys wanted relevant, authoritative links to their site. The problem you've got in the world of fashion, and particularly designer stuff, is those links cost an absolute bloody fortune. All of the sites like Grazia know that brands will pay them thousands of pounds for advertising, and we had a bit of a limited budget here. So we um, went down the competition route. We gave them some free handbags in exchange for a link back to the site. So the client was happy because they're getting, this boosts up their rankings, but they're also getting traffic back and they're being seen in the right place. And um, uh, Grazia were happy because they've got a competition to run their users, uh, get something out of it. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. It's had a real positive impact on their search results. Um, something to, to mention now, and I think it's quite relevant because there's, there's quite a bit of talk today about social, is the way social signals are going to start influencing um, SEO in the future. So, um, sort of to summarize, if you want to rank really well in Google in the future, you have to be good at social, or you at least have to be better than your rivals. Um, the search engines a couple of years ago, uh, Google, Bing, and Yahoo, all admitted that they're, they're monitoring social activity, trying to figure out how that plays a part in rankings. It's in its infancy at the moment, but what they've said is they're looking for, for positive um, signals. So. It's kind of a case that Google really doesn't care that you go on Facebook and you stick photos on there. And Google really doesn't care that you tweet. What Google does care about is if you stick something on Facebook, do people like it? If you tweet something, do people retweet it? So if you think what Google's trying to achieve here is just trying to show good content, it's trying to show good businesses at the top of the search results, it doesn't want to show any old, any old rubbish and scare off its users, then these are really powerful endorsements. And so something to start having to think about now is when you're creating stuff and when you're publishing it online, is it getting better signals? Is it doing better than your rivals? Because if not, you might have a bit of an issue in the near future. And one other area to do with SEO that I, th I think is worth taking a look at, especially for, for a lot of you guys uh, as your local businesses, is Google Plus Local. Um, these are the map results, the map listings that you have on Google, and these can be really powerful because if someone's doing a search for something local, if someone's in an area and they're looking to go and spend some money or visit a restaurant or, or go and buy something, this is the first place they click, particularly if they're on a mobile device. This gets the lion's share of the traffic. Um, Something that's kind of quirky in this side of things is Google just goes off and builds listings whether you want it to or not. It used to use data from, from the directories to just try and build these up for businesses. And you, what you might find is there's actually listings there for like a previous address or a previous business or a previous name or previous contact details that are no longer relevant. So one of the first things to do is just sort of own your space here and take a look and see um, are there any rogue listings and can I claim them? It's free to do and can you take them over and shut them down or change them? Um, when you actually own your listings, then it's a case of promoting them. So are they keyword relevant again? Are you um, building up citations? That's basically mentions of your business elsewhere on the web. Are you encouraging reviews? Because that's the main way you're going to rank well here. Those things are incredibly powerful. Um, this is something we don't see many businesses getting involved in, but the quick wins here can be huge. To give you an idea, we've got a, um, a beauty client. They've got 380-odd stores throughout the UK, so a mixture of actual physical stores and concessions in the likes of Boots. We took over all of their listings and killed off the, the bad ones. We optimized them all, and we started promoting them. Before we could even do anything clever, within three months, we found them a million extra visitors. This stuff is huge. So um, for those guys, it's something that was being ignored, and it was, it, was, it was news to them that you could do this, but it was a real big, quick win for them. Um, at the moment, there's a, a little bit of a change going on with this. Google's rebranding it to something called Google My Business. And if you, any of you guys have multiple locations, there's some cute new features in there for you. So whereas before, you'd have a Google location page and a, and a master Google Plus page, and any content you put on Google Plus would, would be seen across all listings, you can now do it on a location-by-location -location basis. So if you're a business that's um, got different locations and each one's trying to engage with the community, you can now give them really relevant local content, and that's something that's brand new. Um, something I want to move on to now uh, in the world of SEO, which is a bit of a negative side of things, is the issue of penalties. So 
Um, it, there's, there seems to be a bit of confusion in our marketplace, like does Google hate people who do SEO, does Google love them? I don't think Google ha has much of a problem with us. I mean, from all the news I've had from them, they seem pretty indifferent. What they don't like is when you do too much SEO. So if you go off and build too many links or you do the wrong kind of work, Google actively tries to take you down. And so something to have a think about for those of you who've done SEO in the past, um, is um, you know, has this happened to you? Have you noticed a drop in rankings or a drop in traffic over the last couple of years? There's been a few big updates. And take a look in your analytics. So if you filter your analytics data just to organic traffic, take a look in there for something like this. Is there a point of time where there's a big drop? And then you'd be able to see which penalty it lines up with. So that URL at the bottom, um, and if you don't have time to write it down, there's a few URLs in this. I'll, I'll, I'll give them out at the end. That's sort of a timeline, a history of all Google penalties, and just see if you guys have fallen foul of one, which one does it coincide with, and then you know where, where you need to start making amends. I'll go through two of the big penalties now, because they're, they're well worth knowing about. For those of you that haven't started SEO yet, because you need to make sure you go on the right path, um, all of these have weird nicknames. In the past, we've had Jagger and we've had Caffeine. We seem to have a bit of an animal phase at the moment. So there's one called Panda, and um, it was, it's named that because Google released it on International Panda Day. And it was uh, what we term an on-site um, uh, algorithm update, looking for on-site issues, so to do with your content. So what Google is after, like I said earlier, is quality content. It wants to see good quality, unique, fresh content being published by brands and businesses. What it doesn't want is duplicate content. It doesn't want thin content. It doesn't want stolen content. It's actively looking for businesses that nick other people's content. It's actively looking to penalize them. So one thing you can do is take a look. Uh, this is a free tool called Copyscape. It's worth chucking pages from your website in there and any blog post you've done to see if someone has ripped them off or if whoever you paid to write them <laughs> nicked them and uh, didn't bother writing fresh stuff. What Google doesn't want to see, um, I mean, duplication is a big problem. It's a big no-no. Google just wants one page to do with one um, subject. It doesn't want to see loads of people um, all with the same stuff. But thin content as well. And when you think about e-commerce, if any of you guys are trying to sell product online, there was a lot of collateral damage when Panda came around. Because for the most part, you'd have a distributor or you'd have a manufacturer that provides you with a product list and, and descriptions for each of those products. But they do it as well to every other retailer. So there might be 20 of you all with the exact same content. And quite often, it might just be a sentence or a couple of words describing the product. So in an ideal situation, you'd start rewriting things, and you'd make it unique, and you'd bulk it up a bit so you can get, get, a, get ahead of any future Panda problems. I'll move on quickly, so I've got so many bloody slides. I'm trying to go through 20 tips here. We, 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 we might not cover them all. Um, Penguin, uh, another big update, um, is what we term an off-site uh, um, update, and it's looking for links. So this isn't anything to do with your website itself. These are the links pointing into your website. And once again, it's a quality filter. So Google doesn't want to see junk websites pointing to yours or the kind of websites that are against their terms. So what it doesn't want to see is if there's link farms out there, which is, which is an industry term for, for sort of fake websites that exist just to link. Doesn't want to see those. If there's paid links, you can have a problem with those. If there's blog comment spam, you could have a problem with those. And Google's actively looking for businesses that have had this kind of SEO work in the past because it doesn't want them to rank above others. It's not fair, and sort of rightly so. And so a couple of things you could uh, use to see if this is an issue for you. There's a tool by a company called Moz, which is called Open Site Explorer. There's a free version and a paid version, which is something like $50 a month. There's another one called Majestic. If you are using uh, Webmaster Tools, you can get a picture of the inbound links there. I would recommend everyone takes a look at their link profile and just tries to identify, are these links pointing in relevant? And are they from authoritative sites? Or are they links that have been built naturally? Or has some dodgy stuff happened? Because if, if it's the latter, at some point in the future, you're probably going to have a problem with Google. One of the things Google um, has realized is that this stuff has been rife, uh, particularly if you're in competitive industries. So they've given us some, some tools to, to get around it. If you do have dodgy links, take a look at a thing called um, disavowing, and you can submit a file to Google that looks a bit like this. It basically says, these links are from the past. I don't want to be judged by these anymore. When you're, when you're trying to calculate the rankings for my website, look at everything else, don't look at these, and you can sort of um, quarantine them off. Uh, that, that's a disavow tool, so you get that via Webmaster Tools. 
But the other tools, yeah, so it's OpenStack Explorer. That's probably the best one to use is Majestic and Webmaster Tools. Um, one thing I just want to talk about now, because it seems to be a bit of an issue with a lot of local businesses, um, is doorway pages. And it's, it's a bit weird to be stood here in 2015 talking about these, because they're an issue from 10, 15 years ago. But they must still be an issue, because Google's about to launch an update that's going to tear websites with these on them, a whole new one. What I'm talking about with doorway pages is what you can see down the bottom here. Quite often, businesses will have um, tons of pages that have all been created just to rank for keywords. They don't offer any benefit for the users. They're just there to, um, to attract local traffic. Um, Google's now going to release an update that's going to go around looking for these and giving, giving those websites a bad day. So I just um, take a look on your website and just a couple of things to, to look for is if you are using different pages for all the, all the places that your business serves, don't make them as keyword focused as this. You know, just having Cardiff and Bristol and Swansea is good enough. So think about it from the user's point of view as well. Um, if any of you guys are franchise businesses, you might actually fall foul of this one unintentionally. So this might not be a case that you've been a, been a little too vigorous with your SEO. It might actually be because you're, you're going to be collateral damage here. So I'd take a look at, the, look at these pages and, and just think about the quality filters with Google. Is, is it too keyword optimized? Do I have unique content on those pages? What can I do here to, to help with the user experience? Because then Google's cool with it. That's all they're looking for, really. And the last part of the SEO section here I just want to talk about is the recent mobile update. So a few weeks ago, um, Google launched uh, a mobile update that is prioritizing sites that are mobile optimized and responsive. Um, in the SEO world, we all got ourselves into a real panic over this one because people started terming it mobile geddon and because a rare um, situation where Google actually gave us pre-warning that an update was coming. Um, and then Google at an event announced that this was going to be bigger than Panda and Penguin combined. So everyone in the SEO world started freaking out over this if they had, if they had projects or clients that weren't optimized. And then April the 21st came and nothing much really happened. But I think what's interesting here is, I mean, the, the sort of impact we've seen is that some clients with responsive sites rank better just for mobile traffic than they used to. But it shows uh, a bigger picture of Google's intent to, to please users and how much they take mobile seriously. So if any of you guys don't have an optimized website or don't have a responsive site, you really should. But second of all, try and figure out how much of a problem this is for you at the moment. Take a look in analytics at your organic mobile traffic, because that's what's at stake at the moment. Another URL for you guys um, is on Google. There is a tool that you can stick your website into, and it'll actually grade it. It'll tell you how mobile friendly it is. So you might not actually have a problem. But it's something worth keeping in mind and just keeping, uh, keeping ahead of. I'm going to move on now to the subject of pay-per-click. Um, and uh, just to give you guys a few, a few insights into a few of the main areas where it's worth spending time and effort. Um, this to me, if you're, if you're currently running pay-per-click and you're looking to increase ROI and you're looking to improve your returns, this is probably the most important part of Google AdWords. Yeah, it's buried away. So what we're looking at here is within the keyword section, there's a search terms uh, button and within there you hit all and this will show you all of the search terms, all of the keywords that your advert's displayed for. Um, and in there, then, you can start easily identifying the ones you want to negative off, the ones you never want to show for again. Um, this is something where whoever's managing your pay-per-click, whether you're doing it yourselves, or it's, it's a colleague, or it's an agency, or a freelancer, this is something that should be looked at very regularly. And if your keyword strategy um, involves any keyword types that aren't exact match only, then this is an important thing. It's probably the most important part of, of um, ongoing PPC management. And so just make sure that one's being covered. That's, the, um, that's for us, uh, at Liberty, that's where if, if, we, if we review accounts and that's not being done, we know we can improve ROI really quickly. So it's a big, important area, often overlooked. Um, one of the things I love with pay-per-click, um, and one of the reasons why I, I decided to dedicate myself to digital like 10, 12 years ago when I got into this, is how you can split test adverts and find out what your marketplace care about. Because obviously before you, you'd run TV ads or, or radio ads or print ads, and it might take days, weeks, or months to actually learn the messages that work and get the response rates. Whereas with PPC, if you're in a competitive market and there's volume, you might be able to find out within an hour or two. So what we always advise clients to do is just 
just split test adverts, maybe have one message that's price sensitive, have another advert that's near identical, but it's going for a different, um, a different USP or a different offer, and let the market tell you what it cares about. So don't let any assumption um, sort of lead you astray when it comes to advert copy. A couple of tips I've got on this subject is, um, by default, Google doesn't have it on an even rotation, so you'd want to go into the settings and set it that way. So make it a fair fight. What I mean by even rotation is that, is that saying I've got a minute left? Or is that, that's the, Jesus Christ, okay. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll do like a little PPC workshop at the end if you want. I was gonna talk about, here's what you could have had. Google Shopping and these and why they're amazing. If anyone's in e-commerce and you don't do this, you really should be doing it. I was gonna talk about remarketing and I can talk about that one on an hour or on that's my favorite subject. So that's the cookie-based advertising that follows you around the internet. Um, really good way of um, dragging people back to your website depending on why they left your website. Uh, I was going to talk about display placements, don't worry about that one. Um, that was the boring one. I was going to talk about ad extensions, so these nice um, things that, that give you more real estate on Google but also can really um, help, uh, help with um, converting visitors, so ranging from the stars to the site links to these ones, you see the second gray line there, they're called callouts. So if you guys aren't using these, callouts is a way of checking your USPs and your offers into adverts. Um, all of these are free to use. You're still just paying for the click from Google, so I'd advise everyone to take a look at those. And then I was gonna talk about Bing and how you can get great low quality traffic and high conversions from Bing. So if anyone cares about any of that stuff, because I've droned on about SEO, then um, come and grab me afterwards. Cheers. Mm -hmm.